Hello guys, welcome back to the shop. Uh, quick video today just to show you how to, or show you how I chop a lock-in to a door. Uh, not necessarily noticing the lock-in, but uh, more transferring the um, lock or the euro cylinder position and the handle position down the door when you've not got a square door to work from. I see some people struggling and measuring off the edges and all sorts. So, uh, this is how I do it. It's quite simple really, but uh, yeah, I've seen people struggling with it. Uh, so once you've got your lock mortised in, there's various ways of doing that. I usually try and do them on the mortise before I actually put the door together. But you can router that or you can get like a mortising jig that clamps either side of the door. And you can do it with an electric drill called a DBB mortiser. But, uh, Purposes of this, once that's in, sit it in place. There's usually a mark or something on the face plate of where the spindle hole is. So push that top and bottom or wherever you want your lock to be. And then you want to put a mark on the base there or on the edge of the door where that hole's going to be. That's done with that now for the time being. On these types of locks, we know that um, from the spindle hole, to the centre of this hole here is 92mm. So if you're looking for a handle to suit this lock, you're looking for a 92mm handle. So once we've done this, I'll tick that hole and I'll try and show it up. It's quite difficult to get these things to show up. I've already done the other side of this door, so I thought I'd just do a quick video showing you on this second side. So you'd mark that line as your spindle hole. Come from that 92mm, I usually work off 100mm, a bit more accuracy, and mark a second line and square this over. Now, because this door you can see is a rebated door, the difficulty is that uh, this base plate here isn't necessarily the 45mm setback to them holes from this edge of the door. So uh, a lot of people are guessing and things like that. The best way to do this is to put the lock in place, sit a square on from the face of the door, um, find it where it's going to sit exactly when it's finished. So I don't normally go where the lock's mortised in. If it's this type of lock, I'll go somewhere further along the groove where it's not housed in. So down here, push the lock down so it's seated. You could screw it in place as well. And then just stick a, a ruler on it and measure down to that face plate. So from this, the highest point of the edge of the door to that face plate is three mil for this door. <clears throat> and we know from the spec of the lock, but we always check it anyway, from the edge of that face plate there to the center of that mortise or the spindle hole is 45 mil. So from the highest point of the door, both sides, we want to be 48 mil. So it's 45 plus the three mil to the face plate. So to mark that out, I'll drop the camera down. So to mark that out, this is our spindle hole. This is the center of our Euro cylinder hole. What I would do is put the square back on the edge of the, the face of the door and use a ruler. Once you've got that uh, reference, you can take this out of the way. And this, it's the same principle whether the door's in a vice, horizontal or vertical, it's already swinging. So 48 mil, do a tick. <coughs> and then we can go from this point here. If you're working from a combination square using pencil, you obviously want to be just shy. I don't know if you can see that there. You want to be just shy of your line with the end of the ruler because the pencil doesn't mark exactly up to it. So you can see that's the exact place you want to be. And you can just run a mark in here and here. Square these lines down. That's the spindle hole. That's the Euro cylinder hole. I'm just going to extend that line a little bit because that has got 
the bottom, the keyhole shape. So the keyhole on a Euro cylinder, I usually go 27 mil from the centre of the the 19 mil hole, and that that is the extreme of the Euro cylinder. So you don't need to cut any further than that. So our initial shape, I usually use a 16 mil hole for the spin, spindle hole, 19 mil for the Euro cylinder. And then 12 mil for this. So that's what we'll be cutting out. Um, same applies for the other side. Um, even though it's rebated away, because you're putting the square across from this face and referencing down from it, you'll always have the correct offset from the um, lock to the spindle hole. Once you've uh, drilled one hole, you just clear the waste out from the inside of the the lock, if there is any, where it's uh, it's gone through into the lock cavity. Okay, clear that waste out. Then just try the lock in. Okay, you can see that's pretty good. Um, it should be pretty good, whatever, but uh, sometimes you can be a little bit out with that. But if you just drilled one hole, generally I'll start with the spindle hole because that's not too critical. Um, and it's easier to adjust um, and you don't see it, whatever. And then this hole, you know, you can get right because if you make your adjustments for this one, you can drill this one in the correct offset and then your keyhole shape will look good. Uh, but yeah, pretty confident we know what we're doing, so uh, it doesn't matter that we start with this one and then uh, all we do now is just carry on that line and take that out in two clearance holes and drill the spindle hole. Remember this line was our extreme line, so we don't need to go beyond that. So we can just set the drill. Here. Normally I'd just chisel this out, but we'll see if we can drill it today. Benefits of a good drill bit. <laughs> can just take these out with a chisel on the right size. the back. Move along the bus to the spindle hole. Try a different drill bit here. Does it really need any clearing on the back edge? There we have it. Is as easy as that. The lock's a little bit low there. There we go. Just perfect. Um, like I say, this technique works whether it's uh, in the vice or hanging. Just use that uh, the face of the door as a, as a flat surface to work your square from, and then you can measure the same both sides. Um, it's quite often if you've put a leading edge on your door to uh, allow it to open if there's a tight gap um, obviously measuring from the edge of the, the corner of the door down to your latch is a bit inaccurate so just putting that square across the face as a reference uh, gives you something to work from both sides and usually ends with a, a good result or an accurate result of to where the holes are going to go 